what is um, most important to mention is that Industry 4.0 or Fourth Industrial Revolution is basically a term that comes from policy making. It's not a consulting term, it comes from policy making and it's, it was basically invented by uh, Germany um, in 2006. Currently best studied are those strategies like Made in China 2030, that also includes that um, um, big belt strategy. Um, the, US, uh, the US strategy and the German strategy. And all of them try to synchronize those actors, education, government funding, the ecosystem for, for entrepreneurship and, and, and innovation. This is the first Sony Walkman, launched 1979. People of my generation, this is connected to youth culture a lot of good memories. You will realize that this, uh, the reason why we actually had this development was because we had a technical breakthrough in microelectronics and it was possible to have this audio quality on your earphones. This was basically what prevented us from producing a variable device of that quality. And you realize the hot button here. It was there. You also realize it has two um, volumes and it has um, two audio outs and audio in. So a really advanced device. <laughs> you might remember that the ones that you probably had didn't look like that. Reason being, this was developed by engineers in the absence of business people. <laughs> Once this was presented, the business people came to the fore and all of those goodies disappeared. And it cost basically five years of time to market, as we call it today. Now, this changed with the next big revolution, 2001, the iPod. Seven months from perception into fabrication. The reason for that is because, or firstly, the engineers were coming second. First, the idea was what could be sold, what was the market of interest. The reason why we actually could have that is because we saw a great development in the size of five gigabit, uh, gigabyte uh, hard drives. They were now possible to pack them into such a small scale. And all those technological adoptions, like the disc wheel, the audio out, the display, but basically developed in collaboration with other companies that already mastered these technologies. And thereby they could cut the time to market so dramatically. In 2003, we gave this new development a, a, a keyword, a buzzword, and it was open innovation. It was developed by Chespero in his book in 2003. And what it showed was basically the, the end of in-house innovation and it showed that the funnel of innovation in companies had become now very much diffused. So you could see a project being brought in at a very late stage. You could see projects at an early stage being spinned off. Knowing and understanding this new way of thinking explains this enormous explosion of startup activities. This, for example, uh, shows one of the most disruptive uh, platforms coming our way, the um, self-driving car, or here's the connected car. It allows participants that are not active in developing cars per se to play a major role. Another technology with great disruptive potential here um, the blockchain startup landscape. We talked about the blockchain before, but here you can also see that the development is mainly driven by startups as a type of technological uh, playing field. Big companies often step back, watch what's happening, and then place their bet by um, buying up startups, collaborating with them, licensing their technology in. Gives them big flexibility, but also speeds up enormously the innovation process. And this allows places like South Africa that are not technological leaders in one way or the other 
to participate along that innovation chain. So this is a big opportunity that there is. You can participate in Industry 4.0 even if you are not the driver of the main technology behind it. This here depicts, the, it's a bibliometric study on 20 million documents. One of our big activities is at the higher school of economics to study emerging trends and use them for mainly policy consulting. And here you see groups of keywords, total frequency in comparison to others, and average annual growth rate, which means how important are they? How important will they become? Now, when we talk about food and agriculture, we see that the biggest impact comes from this side here. It's no longer genetic modification, it's genetic editing and the CRISPR technology. So we are now able to fine tune individual genes or gene sequences to switch on and off demand for water, likelihood to be affected by pests, and so forth. But we are also able to give South African crop a unique footprint. On the very fast growth rate, you find lab-grown meat, but you also find um, eatable insects as a cheap source of protein. We will need that, because if you look at the speed in which we lose agricultural land, because it's sealed up by urbanization. All those technologies are developed in highly developed economies. And they will be available against licensing. That must be clear. And there is no chance for South Africa to catch up here or take leadership. You can best see that on this picture here. This picture was done on a group of 8,000 companies in Moscow, uh, in, in Russia, sorry. And we asked them about their use of advanced manufacturing technologies. And you find them here in red. Lasers, composite processing, additive technologies, micromechanicals, advanced alloys, biotechnology, advanced catalytic processes. Here you have two dimensions that you need to see. Local focus versus global focus. Monopoly versus competitive markets. And you will see that additive technologies, that is 3D printing, composite processing, processing, advanced alloy processing, have no impact anymore on the global focus. They mainly stay here in between. And they are mainly driven by companies with state shareholders. The reason for that is to take those technologies on, you need to have massive investment. The technology gap between the leaders and the followers is so much that if you take on those technologies, you can use them for an advantage in your local market, but no longer to play a global role. Now, this doesn't mean that opportunities go uh, um, have, have left and we, we stand no other chance anymore. This here is a project that we did at CPUT done also on a vine farm and it was called the visual calculator. One of the big issues at, in vine farms and in agriculture is that the level of skills and education of the, far, of, of the people working on the grounds is not very high. So we need a technology that really supports them. There was a handheld device that looked exactly like the farm had different functions to choose from, irrigation, water, pesticides, and so forth. It was an app device that was in, very intuitive to use, didn't require much knowledge about the technology or any other advanced skill set. Approaches like this can open enormous opportunities for late coming countries, because these are the niches that the big players tend to oversee, because it's not worth it. Now to summarize, I personally do not see um, big threats coming our way because I don't believe that working in a, in, a, in a factory, in a mine, or as a checkout girl at Pick and Pay is the epiphany of human development. If we have robots who can take that 
brainless tasks away for us, we should embrace that. Our challenge starts what happens afterwards. We need to come forward and develop utopian visions of how a society could look like. Embracing those technologies. Because they come either way. Thank you for your attention.